So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Stephen Spector, your Dell Cloud Evangelist. I'm here with Alan Cohen from uh, Nasira. Good uh, good morning, I guess. Yeah, it is morning time for you, Alan, as, as myself. California. Thank you, Stephen. So, well, it's really early if it's California, so I apologize for getting you up so early. But um, uh, why don't we go ahead and start and tell us a little bit about yourself, Alan, and uh, Nasira. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Stephen. So briefly, um, I'm the VP of Marketing here at Nasira until uh, so about six months ago. I ran the enterprise uh, marketing solutions uh, business at um, Cisco, the little networking company down the block, and uh, uh, have done several startups and so about 20 years or so in uh, a range of um, tech um, spaces. Um, Nasira is a network, to switch gears, Nasira is a network virtualization company, uh, which I guess is kind of a new category, uh, so to speak. So we uh, build a network virtualization software uh, a platform that works alongside um, a network hardware to allow uh, kind of the properties of the cloud to start to happen. That's uh, the high level, sixty thousand foot. Uh, yeah, and we'll and we'll dig in a little bit. We won't go too far for the listeners. We obviously can let them contact you. So if we look at you know public and private clouds, what is it about networking that is driving the demand for companies like Nasera to create these new solutions? So if you look at if you look at all the IT stack, whether it's storage or compute slash server, um, you, know, you you see a very uh, well defined and uh, experienced um, uh, virtualization where people are able to effectively decouple a series of functions from those parts of the computing stack, and that has allowed kind of a new type of operational model. It's allowed a lot more efficiency and utilization of storage and server resources. Um, we- when you get to the network, with the area that we all work in, uh, things really have not changed since we went from mainframe to client server, meaning that networks are you know, incredibly reliable. They work really well. They forward packets. But the large operational model of networking and the economics that are associated hasn't really changed in a generation. Right? Networks are still, for the most part, manually configured and provisioned. Right. And if they change, that hasn't changed. So... You know, you bought VMware or you bought Zen, but you didn't get Amazon, you know, Amazon Web Services, so to speak. So the network has been the inhibitor to like getting us, I think, to this vision of cloud, whether it's public or private cloud, that everybody's been waiting for, which is, you know, kind of infrastructure on demand and then platform as a service and those kinds of capabilities. So the network is, is still the stumbling block. Uh, it's, the, it's the only part of the IT stack that's kind of still stuck in the um, older model. And so this this idea of a network virtual platform that you guys talk about that that is the next generation is that is that the way to look at it? Yeah, and it is. And you know, in the data center in particular, you know, one of the things that's important to understand is that the edge of the network has shifted from, uh, in many cases, from the physical switching layer in networking to actually the server. Right, every server has a vSwitch, a virtual switch in it. Um, Sira is the progenitor of something called Open vSwitch, which has been upstream into Zen, it's been upstreamed into the Linux kernel. It's actually part of AVM. I mean, there's a vSwitch in, um, in, in VMware, um, in ESX, and even uh, Microsoft in their re- recent Hyper-V announcements have shared that, you know, you know, basically the ability for interchangeable. So the edge of the network has shifted. And that, you know, being able to manage and manipulate that edge of the network as it moves into the server is what's created this virtualization layer. So easiest way to think about it, applications are um, virtualized and, log- and logically decoupled from the physical server from virtualization, but they're still chained to the physical network. And that's the part we use, we use layer of software so you can, applications and the net can be, um, can be abstracted from, virtu- from the network, which is now virtualized. And that's what this network virtual platform is, is, this, is the separation of this. Right, right. that's and, exactly right. And then what are the benefits of doing this decoupling? Um, there are none. We just did it for the heck of it. Just did it for the heck of it to make a new business? No, I mean, there, there's a lot of key benefits. I mean, there's, there's three things that go into network virtualization that are really important. One is that you first you have you decouple the virtual network from the physical network hardware. And that means it will run on any physical network hardware. You still have to build a good physical network to have a good network virtualization layer, but it, but it's decoupled. Secondly, it gives you more of the operational model of virtual machines, so it becomes more programmable as opposed to manually configurable. And then, you know, the last part is that abstraction allows you to faithfully and fully recreate 
the services of the network, whether it's apps, access control lists, whether it's quality of service, whether it's user profiles. And that's what creates that, that dynamic layer. The benefits of that are, you know, are multiple. You know, one, um, if you run a data center or you're building a cloud, you have a huge amount of investment in servers. Uh, and in many cases, those servers are stranded because the fabric that people are moving to in the data center is layer three. But you may have a bunch of resources running a pod or a rack, and that's, you know, that, that sees itself in the rack as layer two, right? It looks at it as a LAN. Mm -hmm. but when you cross the data center, you don't have that kind of subnet mobility. So being able to take all the server infrastructure, which is where people make the big investment in their data center, be able to more fully utilize it is a key economic benefit. The second one is you remove a lot of basically human intervention. Which and, is always good. Yeah, which is good because, you know, look, network admins are kind of expensive to read and they're hard to find. So being able to, you know, allow them to focus on high, A, higher level tasks and B, you know, in some places people, everybody building clouds can't even find these people. So making it more programmable. And then three, as the network kind of logically decouples from the virtual network, from the physical network, you now have the ability to, you know, use any, you know, you can use your existing physical network or you can migrate it, right, as, as these new layer three fabrics emerge. So it really gives you some freedom on that side. Great. So now, again, I am with Dell, and I know that Dell has a product called Force 10. And so I'm forced to ask by the Dell people, is, is Force 10 a competitive product? Does it complement you? My understanding is that in some ways it's competitive, in some ways they complement each other. Well, you know, I think... I don't actually think it is a competitive product, meaning since we don't build physical networks and we still you still have to have a physical network. I would say that Dell competes with Cisco, competes with Juniper, competes with HP. Right. right? You're you know you're competing with you know people who build physical fabrics. Um, you know to the extent that um, people are obsessed with things like OpenFlow, which was actually invented by Masira right. and contributed to the industry. You know I you know I. I I don't, I don't think so, but I would say that we compete with the older model as opposed to a physical company, meaning people who want to manage and configure uh, switching in that in that in that manner. So that to that extent, you know, there's friction. But to the extent that you guys are building great layer three fabric and you know bringing you know all your assets to bear, I I don't see the the competition. We don't you know we don't you know we're not we're not placing bids against each other any day of the week that I've seen. Okay, good. Well, that makes my life easier when I promote your stuff. So um, now if I was interested in your products, do I come to your um, company's website and look? Do I go to resellers? Do you guys sell through third parties? How does that work? Yeah, so today for the most part, if, if you look at it, we just only – you actually got to us quickly, um, you know, Steve, that you know, we've only been launched about three or four weeks publicly. So the company was in stealth mode for four years, which probably sets a record for <laughs> structure software company. In fact, some people used to call us the least stealthy, stealthy startup in the Valley. Um, so, no, you can actually now go to our website and learn about what we do. And you can see we launched a very significant cloud customers, both on the service provider and the enterprise side, AT&T and NTT and, and Rackspace, um, mm -hmm. basically the largest independent cloud provider um, in the country. And then um, Fidelity and Investments and um, eBay were the first. Those are the customers who are willing to announce with us. Uh, for that, so for the most part today, we are going direct to customers um, because we're working with a couple of dozen very large uh, customers, people who really either feel the pain or see the opportunity for network virtualization. We're not really in the, for the most part, in the mid-market enterprise um, or general enterprise accounts. So, so today it's directly by us. Over time, I imagine we'll have partners that will help. To help. Well, this is good. Usually the companies I talk to are like, well, we're almost ready to sell. It's only a couple of months, and then it never seems to happen a couple of months. So it's a rarity that I find a company has the product. Um, if I wanted to learn more besides your website, I assume you guys are at big events. There are certain things we should look for that customers are interested to get a hold of you to find you guys? You know, it, it's funny, actually. We've actually chosen not to go down the event route. The one place you'll really see us very active is at OpenStack. Okay. And and we as you I think you know this that we lead the quantum, which is the networking module part of OpenStack, uh, partnering obviously with Rackspace and NASA for the last couple of years and now the broader group of hundred and twenty companies or so that are involved in it. But you know, for the most part, um, you know, we don't go to the big events. 
Uh, maybe, maybe we should, right? But no, you sound like Dell. I've been looking at the big events for cloud, and we don't go either. So there, there must be a new movement to reduce the number of events everyone goes to. Well, you know, I, uh, you know my personal feeling is that you got to really parse through these things. Is in, you know, the larger customers, their mark, the marketing strategy of the large customers is go see them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, events is where you get to hang out and have drinks with other vendors that you've known for the last couple of generations. Don't so, tell the speaker it. Now my boss will hear it, and that's it. Oh, uh, yeah. Now you're in trouble. Though. But, you know, I'm <laughs> hopefully more, more involved in, in some of those. But, you know, people have found us, uh, and I guess over time we'll have to find them. And, and I do know the OpenStack Dell is pretty largely involved. And in, uh, actually, um, if you listen to this this week, if I get this out quickly, um, we're actually doing a whole um, – Get Essex booted up in Boston and in Austin. Um, yeah. We'll be running this week. So Dell is pretty active as well, working on the uh, well, working with is, on quantum. It's really important. We're very impressed. You know, in the you know the year that I've been following this this closely, I am really impressed with the range of very large technology companies that have really gotten behind OpenStack. Right? And, you know, OpenStack's not just for a bunch of cloud guys that are out there anymore. Look, you guys are in it. Mm-hmm. IBM is in it. HP is in it. AT and T is in it. You know, like eBay. I, eBay is in it, right? Obviously, if you, if you look at a lot of our customers, you know, we've met a bunch of them there. So, um, you know, I, I hate to say it. I think this thing's real. It's got legs. It's moving. No, it's real. It's going to – it's uh, it's, it, right? it's happening. Great. Well, Alan, I appreciate you taking the time. I think we had a bit of a pause there for a second. And uh, thank you again for joining us. And uh, right. we'll be getting this posted out uh, very shortly. And if you listen to this and you're interested, please follow up with these guys. They have some really interesting networking um, technology.